These ads are being called corrective statements, and they all stem from a 2006 lawsuit where the judge came down pretty hard on the tobacco industry, saying that for decades the industry had worked uh, together to hide the fact that tobacco is harmful to health and basically worked as a bit of a cabal and tried to, do the, tried to hide those, uh, those negative impacts of tobacco and, and smoking. And so as a result of this, they wanted the tobacco industry to place these ads. That was 11 years ago, so it's taken this long to work its way through the courts to end up on TV this weekend. And so we're going to see it on major TV stations as well as in major newspapers. And the topics of these ads are going to cover uh, five major areas, among them the addictiveness of smoking and nicotine, the adverse health effects of secondhand smoke, as well as the fact that light or mild cigarettes are just as bad as regular cigarettes. Let's show you an example of one of the ads now. The federal court has ordered R.J. Reynolds Tobacco, Philip Morris USA, Altria, and Laura Lard to make this statement about designing cigarettes to enhance the delivery of nicotine. R.J. Reynolds Tobacco, Philip Morris USA, Altria, and Laura Lard intentionally designed cigarettes to make them more addictive. Now, the ads are going to air five times a week for a year for a total of 260 ads. They must be in prime time Monday to Thursday between 7 and 10 p.m. on the major networks, ABC, CBS, and NBC. And as well, Michael, they have to be placed on uh, major newspapers. In their Sunday editions, they have to be full-page ads. So what are anti-smoking activists uh, saying about these ads? Well, you think at first, you know, people would be celebrating this, but when you see the ad that you just saw there, they say that it doesn't effectively give out the message that, in fact, it doesn't have an apology from the tobacco industry, and there's no admission of any wrongdoing on the part of the tobacco industry, and that's because of that 11-year court battle over the wording of these ads. And so originally the judge said that the, wor the wording should read, that we've deliberately deceived the American public. That sentence was taken out after a court battle. After another court battle, there was supposed to be a preamble where they say, here is the truth. That also was taken out of the ad. So they say essentially the information being given is just anything you could find in public health campaigns. They also say, look at the ads themselves. They're boring. They're not very interesting, you know, the exact opposite of what you want an ad to be. And they also point out that they're probably not going to reach the target audience. They're going to be airing in prime time on broadcast networks as well as in major newspapers. That may have made sense back in 2006, but in this day and age when young people are mostly on social media, not in traditional forms of media, the message to stop smoking probably won't get through to them. And so anti-smoking advocates say this is a very small victory, but it's a sign yet again that the tobacco industry doesn't want to take responsibility for what it's done.